Fun fact, Aaron was deathly afraid of butterflies until now. In Papillon, you'll be drafting uh, garden pieces that are flowers. You're gonna assemble a garden and attract butterflies that you will send out to take over these flower territories for points. How come there's no bees? That's what I want to know. The bees are all going extinct. There's actually a pretty big blend of mechanics in this game. So first of all, we're bidding for, for turn order so that we can draft the tiles that we're going to place out here. And these tile placement, it, it's very reminiscent of like Carcassonne, where you're placing all these different types of areas, trying to make a trying to make either a really big clump or a bunch of little clumps, because the bigger the clump, the more points you'll score for that at the end of the game. But the more clumps that you close, so which will probably will probably be smaller ones, the more clumps you close, you'll get to send your color butterfly out to these like special plants that have a, like Aaron said, kind of like a smash up, you know, first, second, and third, or most, middle, and least number of butterflies on them mm -hmm. to get points that way. There's also, there's ways that you can get gnomes that get you points. Every worm, which is like the currency that you don't spend, gets you points. There's butterfly, like this... It's not really a point salad, but towards the end, there's kind of a decent amount of ways to get points. You just gotta pick a strategy and go with it. Do you guys feel like this box is in the way? I feel like you guys know what this game is. We used to stand for all of our videos, but now that we film a bunch in one day, our feet hurt, so we're sitting for this one. <laughs> Which is perfect because this is a very lighthearted game and I feel that you're just sitting around enjoying, you know, the cultivating of this beautiful garden. As light as it looks, it is a little heavier and the, like when it gets, after you start building your garden and you're looking for specific pieces, like there are very like limited amounts of variations of the flowers and you're like, okay, I need this exact piece to close this off so I can actually finish this flower bed and actually, you know, get the big score of points that I want at the end of the game. Plus, I'll be able to put that butterfly out there finally. And I thought one of the most interesting things about like the butterfly placement is it goes in reverse turn order. So like we all draft and then whoever drafted last, if they have any butterflies left to put out, they put them out first, which gives you the chance of actually getting the bonus butterflies. Like, you know, if you put a butterfly on there first from a bigger field, it gives you a bonus butterfly. So like, it's very interesting, it kind of gives that like bonus to the person who's going last, who spent the least to go first on that round, you know. I don't know, it's just... <laughs> this game definitely does have a good... This game definitely... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! This game definitely does do a good job blending, like, almost like a solo game where we're all building our little garden ourselves. But there's also, like, when there is player interaction, it gets pretty like intense because with the bidding over drafting these tiles like Aaron was saying you can have where you need a very specific tile because unlike games like Sorcerer City you can't match up non-matching colors it's like ah eh, they're not gonna score any points but I'm just gonna throw that away like every tile you place has to be against a matching tile so you'll have little like alcoves like I had this big giant yellow one that I was building and there's this little nook where I'm like I really need something that's yellow yellow feel purple and if that doesn't come up, then I'm not going to score all of these points. And then it did, so then it became a really intense battle where I'm like, I will do whatever it takes to get that tile. Whatever it takes. And then on top of that, you know, once you have your garden and you get to pick out your butterflies, it becomes almost area control-esque for these smash-up points where we're bidding, like, we're fighting over who has control and majority of the flowers. And you're looking at, like, okay, well, if I go over here, I get second place, but that... Or I go over here and get third place. I already have some points here. So is it better to go here or go there? Or like I'm going to throw everything I can just to get a bunch of small yellow ones so I can come over here and get this big point flower here. So those two parts where there actually is interaction, I would say there's a good bit of like fighting back and forth. Mm -hmm. But then there also is kind of the slow solo like everyone's just kind of building their garden out themselves. It's actually kind of crazy how many times... Uh, a tile would come up and it would be the exact opposite of what I need. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I need, no, I need purple on this side and yellow on that side. Is there any way I can just flip it and invert it somehow? So yeah, I definitely had that as well, like where you're, oh, I can't close this, but I did notice like towards the end of the game, I was just closing off as many small fields as I could just to get butterflies out there. Because the first field, like when we're, you know, building, I'm like, oh, I gotta make my a really big field. So you spend all this time making this big field 
and you're getting, getting down to the wire, you're like, okay, there's three rounds left. I still haven't closed this big field. I need to get butterflies out there. I'm just going to close off a couple small ones just to get presence on these scoring areas because if not, you're not going to score anything. Like, unless you're storing up a lot of worms or you got a bunch of gnomes mm -hmm. and a bunch of butterflies, like, the you know, having those other things can supplement it, but, like, you definitely need to have your butterflies out there trying to score points. But be careful because URP is limited to the butterflies, and if you don't have a butterfly, you take it from somewhere else. So you can't just, like, overwhelm the board with all your tiny little spaces. You do have to kind of... It, it, is, it is good to get all your butterflies out there, but you don't want to be closing so many small ones that, one, you're not getting the points for having the big ones because only your two largest plots of flowers score and end of game scoring so you want to have two that are really big and then the rest that are tiny and then you also don't want to have just like so many butterflies out there that you don't you can't keep up as i'm sure you can tell this game is really beautiful the art and all the colors really pop and it also like it's super thematic because these 3d uh structures with the the flowers here oh they just fell apart here but they're really like complex and they're really cool because they have all these different areas that you can put your butterflies on and you actually are clipping these butterflies on. Now, granted, we're working with a prototype, so I don't know exactly the method by which they're going to have you do this in the actual game, but I don't know. I feel like the theme really comes through here. You're not just like placing a thing over here or just saying I have control or I have three things there. You're like, you're taking your butterfly and you're gingerly placing them on the flowers. Huh? I uh -huh. use the word gingerly because I've got that word of the day calendar and it's been working out well for me. So if you've mastered Carcassonne and Alhambra and you love tile placement, but you're looking for something else like, you know, having drafting and having bidding and having a little bit of area control, this game kind of has it all and it has butterflies. <laughs> it's definitely, you know, very simple, like in the basics to learn, but there is a lot of strategy in what you draft and when you draft it and where you place it and what you get, like... There's a lot of replay value in this game, for sure. If all that sounds good to you, you should definitely check out this game on Kickstarter. We're going to have a link in the description box down below or a card popping up. Click on either one of those. Get on over to Kickstarter. Either way, you should subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored. I almost cool. feel like I could give this to my mom. Be like, here you go, mom. <laughs> you have a fiancé and you get flowers. Your first thought is, I could give these to my mom. Shut up, it's funnier. <laughs> you ever seen the movie Sherlock Gnomes, but it's but it's Gnome? It was great. I haven't. I did see Nomi, the, Nomeo, Nomeo and Juliet. Juliet. <laughs> I actually went and saw that with a girl. Wow. Was it Aaron's mom? <laughs>